Hi guys, welcome to another episode. My name is Abib Abibad, and today we are meeting with one of Nigerian photographer, Mr. Olayinka, the CEO of Truth Studio. Stay tuned, guys. Yeah, good day. How are you doing? I'm fine. Um, can we meet you? Who is Olayinka? My name is Olayinka Ojo. Like you said, okay, you didn't have the Ojo. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm a photographer, a spoken word artist. I'm a filmmaker, but basically, I'm a photographer. Okay, what is photography? Photography is from two Greek words, photo and logos, uh, meaning photo means light. Of photosynthesis okay. and logos means to write so if you want to bring those words together you have write with light so photography is basically writing with light manipulating light to have good exposures to have good images so basically photography is light okay. what kind of market do you target uh, well the market is wide all right so but uh, I think my market attracts me let me put it that way okay. uh, I'm basically a wedding photographer and a portrait photographer so throwing out that kind of content it actually attracts the people that needs it you know, irrespective of your societal status or age or gender okay what inspired you to go into photography uh, the first thing is the freedom of expression that i enjoy okay. uh, photography is also a means of communication and i think i do that uh i do that with taking pictures so I think what inspired me at first is that freedom of expression in images. You know, uh, the things that I might not be able to say in words, I can say them in pictures. You know, like they say, uh, a picture speaks more than a thousand words. Yeah, true. Yeah, so basically, it's that freedom of expression that I enjoy. Okay. Which is your favorite lens, and why do you like it? My favorite lens is the Trinity lens. We call it the Trinity lens. It's a twenty-four to seventy lens, and that's because if I'm shooting a wedding. I can have it strapped on all through without changing my lens. It's good for my wide angle, it's good for my portrait, so it makes the whole job easier. So I think 24 to 70 lens, 2.8. I don't mind to see that though. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, well, not now. <laughs> later. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, in this line of business, what are the challenges you face? All right, cool. Um, I think the number one challenge is the fact that photography is very expensive. You need to spend a lot of money. I need to keep spending a lot of money. Else you're going to be out of vogue. Number two is the challenge of how to franchise your art. It is very difficult to franchise an art form. How do I mean? Um, people, clients want to relate with what I create. And by the time I started getting a lot of clients, it's necessary for me to now say, okay, you know what? Let me franchise this. If I can't do this, I should have some people that will be able to do it. But getting that set of people that would do it the way you're going to do it is the difficult part. And it's going to be very hard for you to actually sell that to the market and for people to accept. So if it's not you, they don't want to shoot. So, and you need to expand. So I think it's one major issue, not just for me as a photographer, but for every art form to duplicate that, you know, into people, it's a little bit difficult. And of course, we have the light issue, which I believe is general in Nigeria. Um, I think <laughs> vendors and entrepreneurs and their business owners should just gather one day and sue the government. <laughs> you know, if you can just give us light, it's going to solve a lot of things. Uh, you know, we spend a lot on diesel, we spend a lot of fuel. We spent a lot of a lot on um, what's this alternative energy called the solar the solar panel you know for generating light. We spend a whole lot of that. So if government can help us handle that, I believe it's gonna go a long way. So it's a big challenge. And of course, currently, uh, what is actually hitting the entire world right now, which is the pandemic, it is actually crippled you know quite a lot of business and for us that we are into events and people cannot gather social distancing issue people have postponed their weddings 
um, some people even hacks for a phone, people that have paid already. So it's posing a lot of challenge because we cannot work and yet our rent is still, you know, we still have to pay rent and pay some other people. So it's a huge challenge. I just pray that there's going to be a miracle intervention Amen. to end this uh, global disaster. Amen. Okay, in this field of photography, yeah. what are your settings? Uh, well, that depends. Settings are not cramped. They are not fixed. It depends on the environment. It depends on where you're shooting. It depends on who you're shooting. You know, skin color, skin texture, color of the environment. So it's not fixed. The environment and the situation that takes what we said. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think will help you to gain more success? Yes, we know you are doing pretty good, but what do you think, okay, if you have this thing or if you're able to attain this thing, you will be more successful. People will get to know you more. What do you think will help you to attain more success? Of course, consistency is very key. I need to keep uh, delivering the kind of quality that I'm delivering steady. And another thing is to franchise my work which I actually said that it's a little bit difficult to do. And um, consistency basically, and of course improving my craft, reinventing and recreating myself, you know, as against what I've done in the past. So I think that is going to gradually, you know, take me to the pinnacle of what I'm emphasizing in this career. Okay, beautiful. Which is your favorite work? And why do you think, oh, this job, I love it. My favorite work, my favorite work. You guys want to know, right? Yes. <laughs> My favorite work is my next work. <laughs> oh, really? Wow, yeah. that is brilliant. <laughs> okay, um, what advice do you have for young people trying to be a CEO like you, more in this business, photography world? What advice do you have for them? Uh, passion before profit. Uh, as a beginner, of course, you're going to experience a time of obscurity, but I want you guys to embrace that period of obscurity. It's a blessing, it's not a curse, because it affords you the time to create, to actually for you to explore. By the time you start getting clients, you realize that you find it very, very difficult for you to create like you used to. So if you're starting up, it's time for you to explore. Work tirelessly, create stuff, just put it out there, irrespective of what people are paying you or not. Just make sure you keep creating, keep creating, keep creating, and one day the money will come. Beautiful. <laughs> In the history of photography, would you look up to as a real model? Well, I have um, quite a number of heroes. I don't want to call them real models. I regard them as heroes because I honor them a lot. Like. From afar, some of them don't even know me. Yeah. So, um, one of the guys that inspired me a lot is, is in Jamaica. Oh. He goes by the name Lexon Hart. He's a fantastic philosophical fine art photographer. He does well into a fantastic job. His, his mind his mind is so rich. I feel like I'm giving this to you. <laughs> I, I feel like I should just take a vacation right inside of his mind. Really? You know, for one week. That it must be really good. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic photographer. And of course, um in in Nigeria. Okay, this guy is also in Nigeria. His name is my name is Obi. He's a Nigerian, but he's based in the UK. Okay. He's a wedding photographer, a fantastic wedding photographer. Uh, T Y Bello is one. T Y Bello has a unique approach to a portrait. I've been trying to hack into it, but <laughs> I don't have oh, that. Don't even do I that. don't. I don't have that code. It's just fantastic. You know, I draw a lot of inspiration. Okay. You know, from from her work too. So I think uh, those three basically um, they top the list plus me making it for okay so how much do you charge for for wedding session for birthday any form of party but basically for wedding how much do you charge um i'll have to give out our email <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, um how much do you do you do working a uh, picture session or basically for booking no, we don't we don't run a walk-in studio it's basically bookings you have to book us ahead uh for us to be able to attend to you of course uh why we do that is because we don't want to have too much of i don't want to say too much of patronage because everybody wants patronage okay. but we want to work within the standard that we have set and we if we have people flooding in we won't be able to do that so we don't run a walking you have to book ahead and we fix a date with you and then you come around for your shoot okay have you ever come across a station where bike if someone booked you for an event and it paid you let's say in full 
and then he called like um Olainka, i think i want to use another photographer i don't want you anymore let's say you spend the money how would you find how would you do that kind of situation like what would you do well uh, there are return policies and there is a way uh that we that we collect our pay we do that three times 50 percent 30 percent and 20 percent so for the 50 percent that you're going to pay should anything happen and then a few days to your wedding so you're not doing it again we are going to refund just 20 percent out of the 50 percent okay that you paid it's, it's very flexible okay and right. why is that yeah because i must have cancelled an appointment with another person True. which means i'm the one losing at the end of the day so for me not to lose totally and for you not to lose totally so i will split it that way so and i think it's a fair deal um what makes it unique from others well i think we are all created equally but in a unique way and that's why my fingerprint cannot match anyone else definitely so basically whatever i produce should carry that stamp of uniqueness yes so i think uh, my person and my essence as a human being is what gives the uniqueness to my work okay. not trying to put my work against another person's work i'm just unique for being a human you, being yeah. so whatever i'm doing actually carries a stamp of uniqueness so basically it's it comes it comes with a package of being a human being <laughs> beautiful so how many photography do you, do we have there are there are different kind of photography yeah. you know of course we have the popular ones we have fashion photography we have wedding photography we have baby photography we have portrait photography we have lifestyle photography we have still life photography we have architectural photography we have sport photography we have wildlife we have quite a number you know of photography we have medical photography of an x-rays of form of photography you know oh, you know a lot yeah we have quite a number <laughs> photography photojournalism is there war photography is there now pick two Street and photography um, the friendship between the two two of your choice uh of course i do portrait photography and wedding photography basically of course wedding is wedding <laughs> uh, we all know wedding to, is wedding <laughs> but what makes are. wedding different from portrait yes uh as a matter of fact if you if you are a good wedding photographer you have to be a portrait photographer you have to be a fashion photographer you have to be a still life photographer you have to be an architectural photographer why because when you're having a wedding virtually all of these elements are going to be present at weddings that you have to shoot you need to shoot sure. the product you need to shoot the ring because are still life photography you need to shoot buildings and architecture angles you need yes. to look at the lines the leading lines the diagonal lines and all of those things you need to inculcate it fashion photography of course a beautiful bride is wearing a beautiful gown probably by vera one and then you, you want to take a portrait of that you should take it in such a way that vera wangu happens to be the designer we see that girl and be like wow i love this can yeah. i put this on my website you know i want to sell this you know that's fashion plus product at the same time cool. yeah so wedding photography is like uh, it, it it encompasses quite a, a different kind of photography so if you're a good wedding photographer it means that you must have succeeded you know in being a portrait photographer a fashion photographer a still life photographer a product photographer how has uh, social media affected your business, positively or negatively? It has been 101% positive. Beautiful. And that's because before the advent of the social media, you need certain level of connection. When I say connection, I mean physical connection. You need to know somebody. To know someone. To know somebody that would take you to someone. someone. <laughs> yes. And um, not everyone is that privileged yes. to know, you know, people like that. And it, it's going to make you suffer, particularly as a photographer. But the advent of social media has brought everyone together. So the people that I cannot have access to, I can have access to them on Instagram. I can have yeah. access to them on Facebook. I can have access to them on Twitter. Yeah. So they can see my work and be like, wow, I love this. And it doesn't take a few minutes, they inside your DM. Yes. So I think social media has done a whole lot for photographers, creative people, or wedding vendors, you know, because that is actually where our office is, really. For me, unless you have booked me, you can't know my studio. 
True. Do you understand? Yeah. But, be, but before I can do that, I need to go and do billboard outside. I need to go and do, but then social media has created a community for us where everybody is in one space yeah. and there is no state, there's no billionaire Instagram <laughs> user. Yes. And we are we are all in the same estate. Yes, true. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, so it's the same estate for everyone. So social media has been very helpful and impactful for business. Why did you choose to pursue a career as a photographer? Well, it boils down to what motivated me to start in the first place, freedom of expression. I want to express myself and I don't necessarily want to say that in words. So when I started and I started seeing the response, I think I started loving it the most, started drawing me and people started offering me money <laughs> for what I love to do. So I feel, okay, if this, if this is what I love to do and then I can also earn from it, so why not pursue it and pursue it big time? And of course, I looked into the industry. I see photographers that have done pretty well for themselves. So it gives me hope and the future that this is a sure way, way. you know? So, and, and that was it. I settled with it straight up. How do you get the person in front of a camera the way you want it? Um, from experience, I, really, I know that if I have someone in front of me, for me to be able to get that person to look like what I want the person to look like, I have to become that person 50%. Okay, I don't understand you. I will explain. If I want you to smile, for example, I cannot frown. Oh, yeah, I get it. Do you understand? Yes. So it means I need to become you. I need to become half of you. Okay. For you to, for me to be able to get what I want to see on my camera. Okay. And that is where the, uh, the psychological part of photography lies, you know, especially when you're even taking kids. You have, yes. to be, you have to become a baby to take a baby <laughs> picture. True. Do you understand? So yeah. it's the same thing for adults too. You have to become like them. You need to you need to become what you want to see. And so that's the acting part, the psychological part. Study the person. Some people will tell you I don't laugh, but it's a big lie. Everybody laughs. True. Until they see what's going to make them laugh. Sure. Do you understand? So yes. if, if, if people come in here and say, you know what, I don't know how to laugh. You know, I don't know how to pose. I just laugh. It's like, you know, what, let's just start. So by the time I get you to be at home with me, and then while I'm shooting you, I'm gisting with you. Yeah, definitely. And just then I'm, popping I'm, something. I'm cracking you up and I'm working. Before you know it, you have given me that beautiful yes. laugh that I want to see. And of course, a sharpshooter that I am now. Mm. You know. The person feels that, and I'll show the person to uh, actually feel ginger. Like, wow, is this really me? This is me. Yeah, yeah I love it. That's you. So I think that is the way it works. Become fifty percent of the person that you're shooting, and then the magic. Beautiful. So guys, um, now that Mr. Olainka, the CEO of Treat Studio, has explained a lot of things about photography to us, his information will be attached at the end of the video in case you need to do it. Contact him for business, and of course, he's really, really good at it. See you guys next time. Bye.